It's now 5 a.m. on WKYT this morning. These cold temperatures and the snow are making it more difficult this morning, especially for firefighters trying to put out a house fire. We are coming off Valentine's Day, and in Perry County, one sixth grader went out of his way to make sure no one was left out on the holiday. We're looking at snow, we're looking at a winter mix, and we're also looking at very heavy rain in the forecast. A lot to talk about with this system. I'm going to go over that coming up. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome into you on this snowy Monday morning. I'm Rebecca Smith. It is that. I'm Bill Bryant. President's Day and Kentucky Morning Start here on WKYT, so we're glad you're here. We're going to uh, get updated on the forecast as we head into uh, this uh, new week, work week. Here's meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, we still have a couple of flakes down toward the southeast, adding to those totals that we already had the past 24 hours. But I want you to focus in on what we're seeing, I-75, and westbound. Now we're starting to see that transition, at least it's trying to transition over into a wintry mix. That's going to be the trend all day long, and then it finally transitions into heavier rain. Look at Richmond now, 34 degrees. When I walked in, we were at 30 degrees, 33 now in Monticello. So where we are getting that nudge of warmer air, we're going to be seeing that transition over into rain. It's going to be heavy rain too. One to two inches of rain expected today. Then it goes back into snow later on this evening off into the night. I'm going to show you the transition timing on that and how much more snow we're expecting coming up. Let's add uh, UK now to two hour delay, yep. right? That email just came in. Okay, so that uh, is an update on that. And then our universities at EKU and Moorhead also uh, two hour delays at their main campuses this morning. Well, the city got over two inches of snow. Crews have really been out working to clear the roads. You can really see the evidence of that. Some areas, though, may still be a little slick. No doubt. And if you have to drive on this President's Day, use some extra caution. WKYT's Mark Barber is live in Lexington with a look at the roads this morning. Good morning, Good morning, Mark. Bill. And you can see why that extra caution is needed. If you take a look at the street behind me here, this is plotted place in Hamburg. As you can see, completely snow covered. So if your morning commute is going to involve any side streets like this one here, you are going to really, as you said, want to use caution and take your time. Now, the good news is if you can make your way away from some of these side streets and onto main roads, you are going to find much better driving conditions. A lot of those main arteries that feed into Lexington, Man of War, Harrodsburg, Broadway, Nicholasville Road. A lot of those are looking a lot better than these side street here. Road crews have worked through the night, clearing as much snow as they can off of those roads. And this morning, you can really tell a difference. Uh, you can see patches of blacktop, long stretches along those roads there. Now, there are still a couple trouble spots. We're talking about those turning lanes and even heading into intersections where you will still want to take your time and slow down on those main roads. But for the most part, those roads are in pretty good shape this morning. Now, Lexington police tell us that they saw an immediate difference this morning, whereas they were very busy responding to crash after crash last night. Compare these numbers. They say this morning they've seen three crashes since midnight compared to 90 crashes over an 11 hour period yesterday. So things certainly improving out here. But again, you can see why it's so important to take your time, take it slow if your morning commute involves any of these side streets because they're not going to get touched by snow plows because they're not a part of the city's high priority road plan. So that's the latest here in Lexington. We'll give you another live look at road conditions coming up in the next half hour of WKYT News. Live in Lexington, I'm Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, thanks so much, Mark. In Rockcastle County, the snow made for a mess for drivers on Interstate 75. Several crashes and cars slid off the road, forcing state police to shut down part of the interstate for several hours yesterday. The snow was especially a problem for those headed south. Some drivers sat in their cars for more than an hour, waiting for the traffic to move again. We spoke to many drivers who decided to get off at I-75 at Berea and get a hotel room for the night. It was uh, getting rougher by the mile, and then when everybody started fishtailing and you look at a mile of red lights, it's, it's not a good sign. After crews cleared those crashes in Rockcastle County, state police had to deal with several crashes on I-75 in Madison County. One of those near mile marker 97 involved a semi and a state highway department vehicle. That crash did cause a backup. No one was injured. Now, here's a look at the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet snow and ice map this morning. As you can see, the entire state is treating roadways for the snow. All of the counties in red mean the crews are currently treating and plowing streets and roads. All of those green dots are snow plows that are currently patrolling. And each one that is red is a plow currently treating the roads. 
very busy morning across Kentucky for our road crews. And remember that you can check and stay on top of all the snowfall and the traffic with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. You can download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. And you can keep up with all the latest closings and delays on our website, WKYT.com. Investigators in Bourbon County are trying to figure out what caused a deadly fire. Firefighters battled the flames at a home on Southland Drive in the Southern Hills and Subdivision near Paris Saturday. Firefighters found 63 year old Charles Egbert dead inside the home. The coroner thinks he died from smoke inhalation. His body is in Frankfurt waiting for an autopsy. In Scott County, the snow and cold temperatures made it difficult for firefighters to do their job. Crews responded to a home on fire on Josephine Road early yesterday morning. The water crews were out spraying on the home to try to put that out, but really everything turned to ice. The home sat well off the road and needed a lot of water. Crews estimate they had to lay 800 feet of hose to the house. We had a long driveway to deal with, but we had to lay a supply line up a long driveway. And then uh, crews had to walk up. So, uh, you know, in, in better weather, maybe not so difficult. A firefighter also had to be pulled from the home after a part of a ceiling fell on him. He was given oxygen and went back to fighting the fire. The homeowners made it out safely before those crews even arrived. They told firefighters that the fire started near their wood burning stove. The time this morning is 5 06 on WKYT this morning in Louisiana. Governor John Bell Edwards is taking an aggressive approach to the state's budget deficit. Louisiana is $940 million in debt, and time is running out to balance the budget. Edwards laid out a plan to use more than $120 million from the rainy day fund, but he also wants to increase taxes on cigarettes and alcohol and use settlement money from the BP oil spill to plug holes in the deficit. State leaders say they are hopeful that both parties can work together. You know, we're not going to hurry up and rush in and raise a bunch of revenue and see where we have to spend it. We need to put everything on the table, start figuring out what's going to work. Louisiana's governor issued a warning to legislators in the special session that if nothing can be done soon, health care and education would take the brunt of the cuts, forcing closures statewide. In Pike County, one sixth grader did not want anyone feeling left out on Valentine's Day, so he played Cupid for every girl in his grade. Evan Ratliff delivered roses to every sixth grade girl at Pikeville Elementary Friday. He ended up delivering 48 roses, three of them to teachers. Last year, I saw a lot of girls did not get everything that all other girls got. So I kind of felt like the girls got neglected and everything. So I just wanted to give back to them and to show like I care about them. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Evan paid for all the roses himself. He used his birthday, Christmas, and allowance money. <laughs> what about that? They'll always remember that. Well, this year, World Marriage Day also happened to fall on Valentine's Day. For many, there was no better place to get married than Times Square. Several couples braved the bitter cold yesterday to get hitched. Others had surprise proposals or even repeated their marriage vows. The event was sponsored by the Times Square Alliance. So, <laughs> what's more romantic than marriage, right? <laughs> right, out there in the, the warm and in the in the uh, trying to stay warm in the cold with warm thoughts. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. mm -hmm. Hey, it's Monday morning on WKYT this morning. We are just getting started. We have a lot more to tell you about, and we're going to make it through this snowy day ahead. One major retailer changing the way they handle returns, plus a classic toy you may have had as a kid. Drawing a new future that's still ahead on WKYT this morning. Also, hundreds of people braved the cold weather in New Jersey to make a difference for kids with autism. That story's ahead on WKYT this morning. Winter storm warning has been canceled, and now we're looking at an advisory. I'll show you what that means for you coming up. Looking at Defender Radar Network on this first alert severe weather day, a meteorologist Micah Harris still looking at some flakes flying in southeastern Kentucky. However, it's trying to transition. It's going to take a little time. I expect all that rain, so the snow to transition to all rain by about 11 a.m., about noontime. That's probably your best bet. But until then, it's just going to take a little time. You're looking down towards, say, Whitley City and back toward Monticello. Look at those temperatures just above freezing. So we're trying to uh, nudge in that milder air, but it, like I said, it's going to take a few hours to do that. 30 degrees now in Lexington. When I walked in this morning, we were at 28, 29 degrees, and now there we are sitting right around 30. So it's getting warmer before the sun even rises, which the sun's not going to make a huge difference, I promise you that. Morning time, let's break it down for you. Rain, snow mix, it will be on the increase as we go through the day. 
from south to north. It's a little different this time around, but remember, this system is coming in from the south, and the closer this system gets to us, better likelihood of seeing rain because it's nudging in that milder air. That means temperatures move just above that 32 degree reading, and that's a pivotal point right there, 32 degrees. You get above it. Uh, in this type of scenario, this type of situation, you're going to be seeing rain out of this, and heavy rain too. It'll move right in. And we're talking one to two inches of rain from the afternoon off into the evening hours. I mean, it's just going to be one heavy shower after another. And then it will transition back into snow later on tonight. But what we're really watching out for is that flooding concern through the day. Snow accumulation will come later on tonight and into tomorrow. We are under a flood watch from today all the way through Tuesday morning for this section right through here. And you know what? They may even include back toward Russell County and also Adair County because those areas down toward Taylor, Russell, and Adair, those picked up some pretty good snow. Casey County. So we'll, we'll more than likely uh, going to be watching that and see if they actually add a flood watch. Nonetheless, if you're not in that flood watch region down toward the southwest Cumberland area, just know. Heads up because you're going to be seeing some ponding there on the roads as that band of really heavy rain sets up. And you can see where the National Weather Service has it set up. And this model pretty much agrees with it. One to two inches of rain is a good bet for most. You get in far northern Kentucky, it's not as good of a chance. Actually, the farther north and northwest you go, better likelihood of not seeing much rain and not seeing much snow. You guys are actually. I wouldn't say in the clear, but you don't have really that much to worry about. It's really Lexington bluegrass and down toward the south and southwest or southeast rather that you're going to be seeing some pretty big issues. Even a 3.3 coming up on this one particular model there in London Corbin area. So there's going to be a lot going on. We go from a mix this morning, transition into all heavy rain, then transition back into snow later on tonight. It's just when does it transition? What hour does it do that? And also where? What type? I mean, there's so many questions with this system, but we're leaning more toward right around midnight or just after the rain switching back into snow and then moving eastbound as we go through time. Once we move that out of the way, then we'll have a six hour break and another shot at a batch of wintry mix comes flying on in here. It's a pretty good shot, but still, that looks lighter, much lighter than what we're going to be seeing today. Wednesday, a few flurries, but after that, boy, does it look good and get much, much warmer. We're talking 50s. 60s as we slide toward Friday into your weekend. Guys, those days will be awesome, especially coming from where we've been the past several days. If we get flurries on Wednesday, that will be 10 days straight of having snow in the forecast. 10 well, days straight. So it'll be nice to have a little change, at least for a little bit. <laughs> Won't right? it though? Yeah. Let's hope it lasts. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right, thank you, Mike. 515 the time in New Jersey. 1,800 people competed in the eighth annual Polar Bear Walk and Run for Autism. The competitor said with every step in the below freezing temperatures, they're raising autism awareness and money for autism groups. All of the money raised from the event goes toward advocacy and support for family services. One runner said as running in the cold is well worth it. And if we can make a little bit of difference in their life just this much for one day, all of this was worth it. Organizers say the event raised nearly $100,000. Most of that money will be donated to groups like Autism Speaks, Special Services Schools, and Families of Special Needs Children. And that certainly is uh, attention getting, certainly. A very worthy cause. Yeah. All right. Good to have you along on WKYT at 516 on your Monday morning President's Day for 2016. We have a look at your money. Stay with us. Uh, one major retailer is changing the way they handle returns. Plus, Etch a Sketch is drawing a new future. I'm Hannah Daniels in New York. I'll have those stories and much more coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning after a snowy Sunday and basically Sunday night. Things yeah. are clearing a little bit here, a little break. Yeah. Some changes may be coming for Uber and Lyft drivers in Texas. Plus, a classic toy might be getting a makeover. And for all you shoppers, one major retailer changing their return policy. Hannah Daniels has the latest. Friday was a winning day on Wall Street. Oil prices moved higher and bank stocks were on the rebound, helping the market chalk up its first gain of the week. The Dow closed up 313 points. The Nasdaq climbed 70. Voters in Austin, Texas will decide in May on whether Uber and Lyft drivers should be fingerprinted and pay 2% higher fees to the city. While opponents say the measure isn't necessary for the ride-sharing service, others think it's a measure to protect riders. 
Nordstrom will now accept returns from its discount store, Nordstrom Rack. That paves the way for shoppers to return items bought back at its high end stores or its discount outlet. Despite the change, store officials are encouraging shoppers to make returns through Nordstrom.com or the original retailer. Etch a Sketch is drawing a new future. The Ohio art company that produced the classic toy for decades has sold it to Spin Master Corporation in Toronto for an undisclosed price. The owner says the decision is bittersweet but was done to help Ohio art's long term future. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, log on to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Hannah Daniels. All right, 521 is the time on WKYT here on your Monday morning. Great to have you along with us. We have a lot more news coming up for you. And a look at sports. Snowfall totals so far across the region. These are just a few places that I just kind of plucked across the map. Flemingsburg came out at seven inches. Still going to be adding to that as we go off into the night and into tomorrow. I think much of your day, Flemingsburg, is mainly going to be rain. Corbing still adding to that right now. So we'll see where that comes out at. Lebanon at five inches. Campbellsville comes at the same location, just one county uh, below that in and, and, uh, Taylor County. Lexington, Frankfurt, around anywhere from two to four inches, depending on where you were in the counties. But like I said, we may add to that as we go through time. Still looking at that down toward the south and southeast. You go across the Howe Rogers Parkway, also 421. Mountain Parkway, 15 going into Perry County, coming out of Breathitt, 119. Those are going to be areas, not only do you have slushy roads, but you're adding to that, throwing a little bit more snow onto the, uh, those roadways. But then the heavy rain takes over, and it really starts to transition for everybody right around noontime. But the transition of going off into the night and into tomorrow morning with the snow is where does it transition, what time, and also when are we going to be seeing that transition. And so there's a lot going into that with the flooding and snowfall accumulations. I'm going to get into that in your full forecast coming up. First, let's check out sports, see what's going on. John Calipari hasn't coached a complete game in Columbia, South Carolina since 2012, although he's coached in the Palmetto State twice since then. Cal shocked many, probably including himself, when he was whistled for two quick technical fouls and ejected just two and a half minutes into the game on Saturday. His fire and emotion, however, seemed to rub off on his players who dominated the Gamecocks by 27. Uh, seeing a coach fight for you changes your whole mentality, so... When you see him with all that energy, kind of just picks you up, and then after you, you tell your coach that we'll be all right, you gotta just get that energy. You're like, all right, we got this. Uh, when you see, you know, your coach get tossed that early, you know he's fighting for you. So you gotta fight for him, and we just try to go out there and win the game for him. We'll see how they fight on Kentucky's next game. It's Thursday night against Tennessee. The Wildcats will look to even up a season series with the Vols after a second half collapse in Knoxville earlier this month. That game is at 7 o'clock on ESPN. The Kentucky women's basketball team would have loved some payback against Vandy on Valentine's Day. On Sunday, the Cats lost to the Commodores in Lexington last month. On Sunday, though, the team's meeting up in the Music City. Look at Michaela Epps. She's got the groove. Middle of four of five games on the road for the Wildcats. UK ends the first half on a 12-2 run. Janae Thompson hits the three from the left wing. 21-17 Cats just before the break. Thompson does it again, this time from the top of the key. Kentucky had a nine-point lead at the half. Cats extend their lead in the first possession of the second half. That's Macy Morris. She can shoot it. 31-19 UK. Michaela Epps threads the needle with a bounce pass to Evelyn Akator. The lead was 12. Kentucky had 24 points off of turnovers. That's good defense. Taylor Murray forces this one. No one's catching her on the way to the rim. Final seconds of the third quarter. Off the inbounds pass, Alexis Jennings puts it in. Kentucky takes a 14-point lead. Jennings was fantastic in the post on Sunday. A little hook shot over the double team is good. Jennings had a game-high 18 to go with nine rebounds. Kentucky gets the win, 71-55. to That'll do it for your morning sports. Have a great day, everyone.